Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Winners and Winers Radio bonus edition. Number one is Scott and I break down this week's week three of NCAA football action. Of course, Scott, it is the fourth week, but because week zero is a thing, it's actually week three. Confused? Uh, a little bit, but, you know, that's why they're, they're supposed to teach you math in college, right? Did you, did you learn math in college? Uh, did you I have was, to take, for, for your degree, did you have to take math? I was able to get out of it through quantitative reasoning, so I took a couple of other classes instead. Never officially math, but there was math involved. What does that mean? Took some science classes where you occasionally had to calculate some stuff. Okay. No statistics class? No. You know, statistics is very handy for sports betting. I know it is. Okay. Very good. Cool. All right, buddy. Well, we uh, this is our third. This is our third week of doing the show. We are going to break down every top twenty-five game going on in the country this week, starting in reverse order. But first, let's take a look and see how we did yesterday, or see how we did last week. Scott, I can tell you, for both of us, wasn't as successful as week number one. I had Alabama State team total over six. They threatened once, Scott, and they never threatened again. They had a shot at it. They had the ball down there. And what, did they throw a pick or they had a turnover? Something, something, something. I thought they had a blocked field goal for a touchdown. Uh, well, they did have that too. But no, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about going against them. But So we had a loser there. We had the UAB UGA under 44. That was a spectacular loser as – Bennett was pretty good. We were right about half of it. We were right that UAB was going to struggle to score, and they did. We were not right about the UAB defense throwing up any kind of uh, resistance towards UGA at all as Georgia just uh, rolled over them in that one. And in another one that was a little easier, we had Austin P. Ole Miss over 60 and a half in that one cash. So we would go one and two on the week, coupled with our perfect first week, leaves us at four and two on the season. Scott, how'd you end up? Uh, overall, not great. So far, I've been a bit cold on the show. Not awful, but not great. I uh, ended up losing with Boston College first half, minus 22 and a half against UMass. UMass had about a nine-minute drive in the second quarter, which killed pretty much any hope that Boston College had of covering. I had East, uh, Eastern Michigan team total under 13.5 against Wisconsin. That won. The only score was a 98-yard pick six. Fun fact, and Buffalo plus 14 against Nebraska. Hung in there, but Buffalo really missed a bunch of field goals, failed pretty much every fourth down conversion they had, and Martinez had a couple of big plays, and that was really all she wrote. Yeah, I had that as a premium play as well, and I really still feel like I was on the right side of that game. I'm not going to Buffalo lie. hung in there for a decent amount of it. Like, you can look at the final score and say Nebraska blew them out. Yeah. They really didn't. I thought Buffalo hung in there. Nebraska is not 14 pounds, points better than Buffalo. That's my, that's my theory. I thought the coaching staff for Buffalo just did a terrible job. Sounds like the lamenting of losers, Scott. <laughs> a little bit, but, you know, I kind of accepted it. Once Martinez broke that sack – and it yep. ran 70-something yards. To, yep. And then they gave up the touchdown right before halftime. I kind of knew it was over at that point. Yep. But Buffalo looked so good for the first 20 minutes, and then everything fell apart after that. Absolutely correct. So that takes you to 2-3-1 and one on the season. And Still early. Oh, well, absolutely. I, tra I trailed you the whole year last year before overtaking you in the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, I'm, a, I'm definitely not doing any dancing yet. So we've got three locked and loaded. For the end of the show today, we'll get to those. But first, Scott, let's start it off as we always do with number 25. And this week, it's going to be the Michigan Wolverines as they are at home to take on the Northern Illinois Huskies. Scott, got the, I've got the big blue by 27 and a half. And I have 54 as the total. What do you got here? I'm looking at the over. For this one, now I know that Michigan's offense has been kind of underrated up to this point. Northern Illinois, Rocky Lombardi's actually looked decent at quarterback, but the issue I have is that Northern Illinois gave up 50 points to Wyoming. Are you serious? 50 points? I mean, that game was an absolute track meet. That game had 90-something points in it, but I think this total is too low. I think Michigan, if they want to, can score 50. I think they'll probably finish in the 40s. I think Northern Illinois is decent enough offensively to score 14 points. So I'll take the over. I think that this total is too low. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how exactly Wyoming put up 50 points. So hopefully this game it's a great, it's a great question. I'm, I'm sure the defensive coordinator 
might have gotten fired because of that performance. They threw for 204. They ran for a buck 90, uh, averaging 4.2 yards per carry. They only they run 68 plays and put up 50 points. No defensive touchdowns, uh, no returns. Uh, Just saying, if you're in a 90-something point shootout with Wyoming, I got to like the over against a team that can probably score 50 points if they want to. Well, I will tell you this. The fact that they had short fields all night long. I don't know what game you were watching, but your boy Rocky Lombardi threw three picks. Oh, I didn't say it was good. I'm I'm just saying that they ended up winning the first week. They scored 43 points anyway. Even turnovers. That's kind of good if you throw them in your own territory because <laughs> you're looking for points quickly. I just think Michigan's going to cruise. I think they'll turn it off in the second half, and I think you'll see some garbage time points for Northern Illinois. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't hate that. I think, you know, Michigan probably puts up 40 on their own. Um, I never said it was Lombardi was good. I'm just saying that Northern Illinois' offense has scored more than people anticipated. Okay. Well, you're right. And they, you know, and they beat, they beat Georgia Tech the first week. And yeah. this is a Georgia Tech team, the third season with their new coach. He's starting to get his, some of his guys in there. You would expect that team to be better, but so far – what they win that twenty nine twenty eight I think. Yeah, they they won by when they won by one. So. That's what I'm saying though. I mean, you score twenty nine points against Tech. You score forty three against Wyoming. Wyoming's defense is I don't want to say great. Twenty two twenty two twenty one against. Sorry, twenty two twenty one. Sorry, yeah. but the point is they they scored twenty something against Georgia Tech against Wyoming, who's usually has a decent defense. Right. They torched them for forty three. I think they can contribute at least a touchdown or two in this spot. Yeah, and I think that's all you're going to need to get that over. I um, I like I like Michigan in the over here. I'm not going to overthink it. All right. Uh, speaking of Michigan, we've got Michigan State heading down uh, to the home of the great Cubano sandwiches, Miami, Florida. Miami is minus six, 56 and a half is the total. Scott, Michigan State, one of the bigger surprising uh, power five schoolers right now. So that's kind of the trick question because I've, I've been impressed because I didn't think that Mel Tucker was going to be a good hire. Having said that, they beat Northwestern, who we agree is not very good, and they beat Youngstown State. Okay. So I don't really know how much we can buy into it. Having said that, Miami got killed by Bama, which is excusable, and then they barely beat Appalachian State at home. I, I, I'm not impressed with Miami. I'm definitely more impressed with what Michigan State's done up to this point. I can't tell if Miami was sleepwalking through the Appalachian game after a loss, which is embarrassing on its own right, or the team's just not very good. It could be both, but you lose a game at home, you get killed. And then you have a chance to bounce back and really lay it to a group of five team that we both like. We think Appalachian's good. But they really needed to claw for that win. I don't think Miami's that good. You? No, I'm, I'm with you. And the problem that I see for the Hurricanes is – They can't I don't protect know the quarterback. That, well, well, that, but I don't know, I don't know if they're going to be able to stop the run. This is the Michigan State running attack that's been very good so far this season. Now, they did – they did shut down App State. Well, when you say shut down, kind of. I mean, well, App they, State still had 120-something. Peoples had right. like 95 yards. He was fine. They had, anyway. to, grind, they had to grind for it. They, yep. they averaged a little over three, three and a third yards a carry. So, having said that, I've got – Do you gonna, understand the money coming in on Miami? Or do you think that's solely based on one team's ranked, we expect them to show up? Because people thought they'd show up last week and they didn't. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think – didn't we both have App State? Oh, we both like App State. I'm just saying that the argument for Miami was going to be they still had aspirations for either something and they needed to kind of get it back together quickly before it spiraled out of control, and they looked awful for pretty much the entire game. Agreed. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to play Michigan State here. I'm, it's, it's two teams that – I'm not really sure how much of an opportunity I've had to see uh, what they what they're able to do, but I know that Miami has been challenged. I think they they were challenged more in their non quote unquote big game than Michigan State was, and they didn't respond well to that challenge with App State. I think Michigan State is a step and a half above Appalachian State. Uh, yeah, especially this year. I'm not going to jump that far on the bandwagon because they haven't played anybody, but. Right. I've been pleasantly surprised by what I've seen. I'll take the I'll take the road dog here. I'll take Michigan State minus the six, and I'll play the under fifty six and a half. Uh, yeah, the under. I'm probably agreeing with you because if you think it's going to be close, you're assuming Miami's offense is going to struggle. So yeah, I think we're on the same page on that one. You got both of, both of those as well. Yeah. 
All right, my friend, and moving on, we're going to take a look at number 19, Arizona State, as they travel to Utah to take on the BYU Cougars. Scott, BYU ranked number 23 in the land. Arizona State, road favorite here, three and a half points. 51 is the number. You know, I've been down on this Arizona State team. You know, I'm, you know I'm not a, uh, a huge fan of what Herm Edwards has done. I think, I think they've hit their ceiling here. You're 2-0, and oh, right? Fading them against the spread. I am. I am. And they just, they, people love to load up on this. They've got, they, you know, they've got the NFL coach name recognition and they've got the Pac-12 spot. You see them play a little bit on TV. Having said that, I'm impressed with what BYU has done so far this season. I'm not sure where the points are going to come from, though. Scott, oh, God, I'm going against everything I believe in. Give me Arizona State minus three and a half. So for me, Herm Edwards, of course, I know as a former Jets coach, had a famous press conference in which he said, you play to win the game. They are but not, who to, we are. But not to cover the game. So I like BYU plus the points. The way I'm looking at it is that BYU is in a situation where they finally exercise some demons. They beat their arch rival in Utah in the Holy War, won, and now they end up facing a ranked team the week after at home, which is an ultimate letdown spot. I'm aware of that. Having said that, I do like Hall a lot as a quarterback. Now, the issue I had with BYU going into the season was you lost a top quarterback in all of college football, and your replacement was supposed to be Romney. And Romney, I'm not a fan of as a quarterback. However, they brought in Hall, who has a baseball background, and he's been really, really good. And I do think that his mobility gives them an angle. That definitely leads to some success. Now, Arizona State has Daniels, a quarterback, who's also mobile. The issue is Hall can actually throw, and Daniels isn't really a great passer by any means. Arizona State hasn't played anybody. They beat Southern Utah, and they beat UNLV. And they gave up more. And they gave up points in both those games. BYU's defense, I think, is good. Now, Arizona stinks. I mean, they gave up 38 points to San Diego State. So, you know, the defense is awful. But That was a ridiculous spread, by the way. It was ridiculous. No, no, I'm not not that. When Arizona State against UNLV. Oh, yeah, that was was absurd. That was free money. That was – But anyway, the way I'm looking at it is BYU at home – at night, I think they'll win in Provo. I just think Arizona State's going to be a team that's going to struggle to score. I think BYU might struggle to score. I like the under, but I found four available on BYU. I'm going to take the four. I think they might win the game outright. Okay. I think you'd agree that even though you said it goes against everything that I believe in, you'd agree that this game should be decided at some point in the fourth quarter. I don't think it's going to be one-way traffic. I think you're going to see a very competitive game. So if that's the case. I'll side with the dog plus the points. Okay. And I'm just, I'm just looking at that. I'm just looking at that letdown spot there. I'm looking at last week was the Holy War. Now they play, now they face off against mm-hmm. the number one party school in the world. I, I like the party school. Give me, give me, give me Arizona State there. You're going to take four. I've, I've found four. I think that that's good value. I am kind of surprised that that much line movement has come in on Arizona State. Is that just, power five versus independent bias because as of right now through the first two weeks I think BYU has looked like the better team because Arizona State has played two definitions of cupcakes all right yeah we'll see we'll see um and we'll also we want to see how good that Utah team is that, that that win may not be end up being quite as impressive as we thought so we'll see Heading to a little SEC uh Big Ten showdown Scott Auburn number 22 takes on Penn State up there in Happy Valley, uh, the 10th ranked Nittany Lions are a five point favorite. 53 is the number in this one. Scott bought a lot of meals for the family, Faden Bo Nix. I'm going to do it again. I'm just, I'm just not a fan. I like Penn State at home. Give me the, give me the Nittany's minus five there. And I forgot, what's it called? The whiteout crowd night? It is, it is a wide-out crowd. I believe that's going to be a national TV game, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it should be. you got Auburn against Penn State. That should be um, on television. That's what I'm saying. Well, I know it's going to be on television, whether it's going to be a national broadcast is my point, but I believe it is. I believe it is, too. Now, my question for you is, with all of the rumblings about the USC job and how Franklin's name has been mentioned, and how Franklin didn't fully, fully dismiss it during the press conference. Really? That was your takeaway from that? 
I, I mean, think every that, year I have to deny this. Every year this comes up. I'm not focusing on it. I'm not letting it bother me. That's, that's your takeaway? Personally, yeah, because I think that he's actually considering the job. So okay. either I take it at face value or I don't. I'm not. I think that he's actually considering the job. Now the question is, will he get hired? I don't know. But do you think that's a potential distraction for Penn State? Zero. Zero. Zero? No. Thing is none? I'm just throwing it out there, food for thought. But I know he said I have to deny it every year or whatever. He didn't say no. Okay. He just said, I'm asked all the time. I, I have to deny it. I have to whatever. He didn't say I'm not taking the USC job. He didn't say I'm not uh, the zero percent chance. Like, I think he might actually take the job. The only question is, are you one of these guys that looked at Urban Meyer's body language, too, and said oh, he really wants this job? No, because he said zero chance. I'm not doing it. And I think right. that's good enough. Plus, he's one game in. James Franklin has been there for a while. And I am curious if he wants a potential change, a change in scenery. But for me, the question I have for you once again, which is very tough with some of these teams that we've talked about, if you look really dominant against two garbage opponents, how good are you? Because you killed Alabama State and you killed Akron. Am I supposed to think Auburn's now a world beater? Right. Like, I, I, I don't really know. But then again, I saw Penn State – kill ball state i don't know how good ball state is because they struggled against western illinois right. but penn state got manhandled by wisconsin and still won the game so i don't really know how good this penn state team is either hold my nose take the points wow okay all right i got you i'm, not, I'm not a clifford guy I don't, I don't like Knicks either but at least he's mobile clifford's just a stiff like i, I don't think clifford's any good what do you got about the total uh, for the total, I'm going to lean to the over. I've been impressed with what I've seen from Auburn's offense so far. Once again, cupcake schedule, but still, the issue that I have with Auburn for me is the pass defense. When you're against Akron and when you're against Alabama State, it's really tough to tell how good your corners are when they're matched up against Dotson and company. I do think Penn State will generate some big play touchdowns. I think Auburn will generate some big play touchdowns. So I think you'll see some quick scores. I see this game – Finishing around 30 to 27 or so. I'll look at the over. I think you will get into the mid to high 50s. I'm going the other way. I've got the under. I like that Penn State defense quite a bit. Yeah, fair enough. Bo Nixon, they they are going to do nothing. All right, Virginia traveling uh, to Chapel Hill to take on the number 21 at ranked UNC Tar Heels. I, actually, I don't know. Do they, do they play it they, they play it in Charlotte or they play in Chapel Hill, their home games, you know? Uh, truth is, I'm not fully sure. I would I know assume they played, I know they played, they, they played a lot of games at the Panther Stadium, but I don't know if that's a normal thing. or I'll check right now, but anyway, right. carry on. Well, it's the bottom line is could be a home game for UNC. Going to be a lot of Carolina blue in the crowd. Kind of a rivalry game there with Virginia. Uh, ho, 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 ho. It's, this is a tough line for me. The, the total isn't. The, um, there's one way to go on the total, and that's, and that's going to be over. Um, the question that you have to ask yourself at this point is how much stock do we put in the Virginia quarterback right now? Because I mean, so, it's got to be a large stock, right? I mean, they killed Illinois. You know how hard that is to do? That's what I'm saying. He throws for, for 9,000 yards against Illinois. By the way, they're playing in Chapel. They're playing in Chapel Hill? Okay. That's what All I right. thought, but, yeah, I can confirm. Yeah, this kid, this kid Brennan Armstrong, threw for 400-plus, threw for five touchdowns against Illinois. Um, I don't know what we have with Illinois. I'll know a lot more after tonight's game. Of course, we're, we're recording this in Friday afternoon before the Friday night games. I don't know what the hell we have with North Carolina. They lost uh, to Virginia uh, Tech. but Also they, true. They, yeah. they beat Georgia State, but Georgia State defensively is awful. I mean, they couldn't stop Army. They gave up 59 points to North Carolina – I, I can't tell if that's because the offense figured it out or if Georgia State's defense is so useless that you can do they, whatever you want and score. Georgia State's defense is extremely versatile. They found out that they cannot stop the run or the pass. I don't know the special teams unit is, but the defense <laughs> isn't good. Uh, if, it's in, if, if, it's, if the other two are any indication, they probably suck. Yeah, I'm looking at the over, of course. Yeah, no kidding. There, there's no other way to look at the total for me. No. Uh, if I had to pick a side, which I know for the sake of this I do, I'll go with North Carolina because it's always one thing to look dominant at home. But once you play your first road game, your first true road game of the season, you could have world beater teams look awful. I think Virginia might struggle in this environment. It's going to be 
North Carolina's second conference game, the first conference game at home. I think the crowd gets up for it at night. I'll go North Carolina. It's not, an e- it's not an easy spot, but if I'm picking an angle, I'll go with the crowd angle. Fair enough. And I'm, I'm going to go with just a few too many points. If it was seven or less, I'd probably side – with Sam Howell and, and Carolina, but give me eight and Virginia, maybe a late garbage time touchdown as they're throwing the ball. Okay. Georgia Southern heading to Fayetteville to take on the Arkansas Razor Hogs. Scott, Razorbacks are 24 point favorite. They're the 20th ranked team in the nation, by the way. 52 and a half is your total. Arkansas, let down spot up, coming off a huge win over Texas, Scotty? I think it should be because I got A&M at home on deck. I'm taking the points with Southern. Mm-hmm. Now, do I think Southern's a good team? No. But I cannot look past the fact that you have Texas the week prior, then Georgia Southern, then A&M, Georgia, Mississippi, and Auburn back to back to back to back. This is just an ultimate sandwich spot for me. Hold my nose, take the points, because there's no way the coaching staff is not already prepping for AM. Yeah, it's like a club sandwich where you've got like extra layers of bread and stuff. You're you're snacking it high. I mean, I could have stopped at AM, but you go from AM, Georgia, Old Miss, and Auburn back to back to back to back, and you just have Georgia Southern thrown in there before. I can't lay the points with Arkansas here. I just can't God, do it. This Georgia Southern team is it's not good. It's not a good team. Yeah, they are just – they snuck by Gardner-Webb and got blown out by FAU. I mean, we made the argument about Virginia Tech and Middle Tennessee State last week and how Virginia Tech had a sandwich spot because they had a matchup against West Virginia coming up, and I believe they covered by a hook. Right. But they weren't exactly, I would say, fully focused for all four quarters of that game. Don't you think Arkansas, who had a hard time with Rice because they were already looking ahead to the Texas game, I'm not sure if they're going to be fully focused for a full 60 minutes. Southern's not good, but I do think they might score enough in garbage time to at least cover the number and lose by 21. I acknowledge that as a very solid angle that may certainly come to pass. I know you're picking Arkansas anyway, so just do it. I am. I'm 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 going to pick Arkansas. I'm trying to use logic, and I'm trying to break something down, but really the other logic side is, damn, this Georgia Southern team's bad. That's it. <laughs> That's really all you need, but for spot alone, I got to at least consider taking the dog here. I don't See, think it's a slam dunk pick. That's exactly what I have to look at. Can, a, can an Arkansas team that's 75% focused still cover? I think they can. Um, they might be, they might not be able to. But wouldn't be stunned at all to see that Georgia Southern team cash. It's just, it's just crazy enough the, to work. The team's bad. It's just – I mentioned the scheduling spot. That, that's far. so brutal. As far as the total goes – I've got to lean. I've got to lean over. I think Arkansas certainly does their part, and probably some of the some of Georgia Southern's part as well. Well, that's the issue: is that you're looking at an over with a team that runs the option. And if you think Arkansas kills this team, then I'm assuming Georgia Southern's not going to be able to run the option. Right. So it's it's really a tough spot. I'm going to go with the over as well, but it's also because I think Southern can actually score a little bit in this game. Okay. So for me, I think the, I think Georgia Southern might break one or two. If Arkansas is already overlooking this team and they're not really ready for the potential option offense that Georgia Southern runs, I think you might see some holes in the first half. So I think Southern might hang tough, but yeah, Arkansas, if they want to, should probably score 35 points, if not 42 points in this game. All right. Of course, number 18, Wisconsin has a bye. Moving on to Tulane, uh, heading to Oxford to take on the number 17 ranked Ole Miss Rebels, Rebels 14-point home favorites. And, Scott, the I dare you to play the under number is 76 with Ole Miss and Tulane. So, we know what Ole Miss is. The question is, what can their defense do against Tulane that this Oklahoma defense supposedly – supposedly, Scott, this is the year that the Oklahoma defense has put it all together. I've heard that a couple of times. If I was writing that, I would put capitals every other letter. By the last the time I heard that, didn't Joe Burrow have like seven touchdowns in three yeah. quarters? Yeah, that's, I think he's still scoring. So I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to play an under in the Ole Miss game. 76 and a half is pretty large. Well, I've, is, is, you've got it a half. I've just got it 76 flat. But Okay, either way. It's, yeah. it's definitely a spot where Tulane scored 69 against Morgan 
State. I mean, that's, of course, an FCS team. I'm not sure what the takeaway is from there. Scored 35 against Oklahoma. Then again, Oklahoma easily just fell asleep in, for the entire second half. Ole Miss scored 43 against Louisville. Scored 54 against Apps, against uh, Austin P. sorry. But for me, I'm going to disagree with you solely because – I can't live with myself if I take an under and it goes over. I, I just can't. I can't. Like, especially, I, with, especially with Ole Miss. You get Ole Miss puts up 50. Well, who, who could have seen that coming? Oh, everybody. That's, that's right. the point. But Tulane, I think the, ask, the question you're really asking is, do I think Tulane is good enough to potentially score 30 points in this game? Because if you think the answer is yes, then I think you have to look at the over. Yeah. I do. I, I think they can. So I'm going to go with the over. But it's mostly about pace. If Ole Miss is able to just go up tempo and Tulane decides, you know what, screw it. Let's also go no huddle and have some fun. I think you're just going to see fireworks. Ole Miss can go for 60 here. It wouldn't surprise me. So I'll go with the over. But as for a side, I'm actually tempted by Tulane. I think this team is frisky. And I think Ole Miss, the defense will look decent against Louisville. I still don't think Louisville's very good. I roasted Michael Pratt last year for not being a very competent quarterback. He's actually looked really good. So I'll go with Tulane plus the points, and I'll take the over. But once again, it's one of those spots where if Ole Miss wins by 40 and it still goes under because Tulane's offense does nothing, that really wouldn't surprise me either. But whatever. You? This is a Tulane team that knows they have no shot to win if they can't control the ball for at least – 40 minutes, probably. That, that number, I think 14 is pretty sharp, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a I think that's a pretty solid number. I'm going to play Ole Miss and I am going to play the under. I think Tulane has just enough dry, long drives that maybe get paid off in field goals or nothing that uh, takes the air out of the ball just enough. And uh, I think Ole Miss gets it done there. So you and I are on opposite sides of that game. And we're going to take a look here at my old pal, Coastal Carolina, came through me for me last week as a premium play covering against KU, against the aforementioned Buffalo Bulls, who did not cover last week for both of us. Coastal Carolina is ranked 16th in the country. They are a 14-point road favorite. Buffalo is at home, and the total is 58. <sighs> Am I really, really going to fade Coastal Carolina and take an Ole Miss under in the same weekend, Scott? I mean, you can if you want to. I'm not stopping you. It doesn't seem like a – I don't don't think you're asking me. I think you're talking to yourself. I am talking to myself. That's absolutely correct. You know, is this Buffalo – 14 seems like a lot of points on the road here. It really does. I just I can't believe this Buffalo team is really as bad as the score indicated in Nebraska last week. We talked about that, of course. I think Coastal maybe struggles just a bit here. I'm gonna ta- I'm gonna take the Bulls plus the 14 points. <sighs> Play under. That's a tough one for me. That's a tough one. I agree. I'm um, looking at. I think if Buffalo and gets there, they, it's because they run the ball. I see a 14 and a half, so I'll take that for Buffalo. But for me, I think that Buffalo, even though they screwed us last week, I still think Buffalo at home might just be a little bit more, I don't want to say prepared, but I think they'll be less intimidated by mm-hmm. this ranked opponent. I, th- I still think they went into Big Ten country, and they hung around for a little bit, and then one thing went, went wrong, and then the reality set in, and they kind of just packed it in. Maybe it's just me. That's kind of the thought process I had watching the game. Yep. But if a ranked team coming to their home and home environment, they just got embarrassed by Nebraska. I do think it's a good bounce back spot for Buffalo if they can run the ball. The thing about Coastal is they ended up winning handily in the end against Kansas, but they really didn't blow it open like I thought they were going to. They were kind of no. playing with their food a little bit. They weren't. They had. They hadn't covered till the end. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have a hard time laying this with Coastal on the road. I think they'll win the game, but I do think that if Marks can get going and if Entries can connect on some big pla- uh, some big pass plays, I do think you will see Buffalo score more than people think. So I'm going to go with Buffalo. As for the total, uh, that also looks like a pretty sharp number to me. I'm going to go with the over, barely, but I'll go with the over. I think this game ends – 
34 to screw it 27. Okay. Yeah. See, this is a, a, a coastal team that oh, for a lot of the night couldn't get off the field against KU. You That's why it. I think Buffalo might be able to move the ball. Um, now the good news is mm, KU didn't run for much except for the quarterback. So, but they have no running game whatsoever against anybody else. So it's, it's hard to get a read from that, but they were able to pass successfully. Not something Buffalo looks to, to do first with Kyle Van Trees, but they can certainly do it. Yeah. I'm, I'll take, I'll take Buffalo there too. Once again, we say this almost every week, but there's a reason why when it comes to ranked teams, the books are usually on the ball when it comes to lines for a decent amount of these. Yep. And I feel like it's the case once again, this week, we mentioned a couple of matchups here where I feel like the line is right where it should be. Top 25 is kind, it can kind of remind you of the NFL at times. where the, A little bit. A lot of sharp numbers and a lot of sharp movement when the numbers aren't that sharp. And, of course, in hindsight, a team wins by 30 and they're 10-point favorites, and you say, oh, the odds makers were idiots. But at the time, some, no, some, I feel like a lot of these lines are where they should be. Some morons put them on the odds makers were drunk segment of their radio show. Something like that. Well, just, that's, why, that's why when we do that segment, it's usually the same reoccurring team because – you could have learned from your mistake the previous right. day, and you don't do it. It wasn't just a bad number. It was yeah. bad. It was faulty reasoning is, is the parameters that we usually use for that segment. So. Pretty much. Virginia Tech, big battle there of the, uh, of the Mason-Dixon line, basically, is uh, they traveled to Morgantown to take on West Virginia. You ever been to Morgantown? I have not. Beautiful place. Beautiful. Almost heaven. Beautiful country. Yeah, it really is nice. Uh, West Virginia, also the same place. I saw a trailer uh, with an outhouse and satellite dish. So Nice. I hey. don't know. People still use satellite dishes. Uh, this was many years ago, 20 years ago. Dish TV? No, big dish. Big oh. gigantic dish. Okay. Look like they could signal aliens. Part of the, part of the Hubble. Nice. Part of the Hubble project. West Virginia, uh, the unranked team here, Scott. They are the favorites at home. Minus two and a half. Fitty and a half is the total there in Morgantown. Well, we found out Blacksburg uh, is a good place to play if you're Virginia Tech as they uh, handled their business against North Carolina. And now can they take it on the road and to beat a West Virginia team that... Uh, they, al they almost beat Maryland. Game was with Maryland, yeah. Well, they lost, but I don't think Maryland's that bad. The way I'm looking at it is that there has been a trend in the past, which I know that you're aware of, but for those of you who are not aware of it, if an unranked team is favored against a ranked team, take the unranked team. That's usually how it works when it comes to a gambling trend. Take me home country road. Do I think West Virginia is very good? I think they're okay. But I still have serious questions about Virginia Tech's offense. They beat North Carolina, but I don't think their quarterback's any good. I think they're going to struggle to move the ball. I think that West Virginia can do enough to score. But I, do, I think that it's pretty telling. A Virginia Tech team that's ranked – that beat a North Carolina team on national television is underdogs against a West Virginia team that lost to Maryland. I'm not going to overthink this. I'm going to take the underdog. That's I'm going to take the unranked team that's favored in the spot. You? I agree. I agree. I'm with you. I'm with you on the map. I wish I had the numbers in front of me, but I know for a fact that if an unranked, if an unranked team's favored over a ranked team, the percentages ATS are pretty good. As a home team. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I like that play. I, I don't Now this Virginia tech team could end up being very good. The defense is very good. I just don't I think the quarterback the defense, can throw. The defense is outstanding. It's all about what the offense can do. I think the we're quarterback gonna, can run. I don't think he can throw. I think we're going to see a lot of defense. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the under. Yeah, but... I, got, I got the under too. So you and I are on the same page there. West Virginia minus two and a half and the under 50 and a half, right? If you're trying to watch a game at noon, even though I know it's between two rivals, pick something else. You're not going to see many points. Iowa State, number 14 in the country, travels to Vegas, baby. Fantastic. Take on the Rebels. Iowa State minus 32 against UNLV. Scott, 52 and a half is the total. Not expecting a lot from the Rebels. Is that a mistake? It's a really, really tough call because Iowa State got embarrassed last week, and you got to always worry about them taking their frustrations out on a bottom feeder. Having said that, UNLV covered against Arizona State. They gave Eastern Washington an FCS team all they could handle, which I know sounds awful, but we both thought Eastern Washington would win more easily than they did, so UNLV hung around. Yep. I'm going to take the points. Yep. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, I, I've, got, I've, got, I've got to play correlated there. I, I don't think 
I don't think UNLV covers if it's a if it's if Iowa State puts a ton of points on the board. That's the way I'm looking at it is because Iowa State, I know they played against Iowa, who has a phenomenal defense, one of the best defenses in the country. They also couldn't score against Northern Iowa. I don't think Brock Purdy's very good, and I said that before the season started, and I think he's proven me right in two games. I don't know if Iowa State is going to score 42 points in this game. So I got to lean to the under because if they score 35, I think UNLV covers because I don't think they're going to get shut out, and I think it goes under. Okay, that's legit. Am I wrong about Purdy or no? Because yeah. this season he's been absolutely brutal. It hasn't been great yet, but I, I do think you're wrong about Purdy. And you and I disagreed about this on our We Did Our Preview show. I think. Yeah. I, think uh, I'm, I know. That's why I was kind of curious if you've come to my side at this point. I have not. Okay. I, have not. I, 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 think there's, I think there's reasons for the first two games why he struggled. We'll see because, you know, uh, you know who else has struggled is the, uh, is, is the running back. Um, Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Yeah, I would want to say Breezy. Uh, Brees Hall hasn't been great either. And those are, you know, two guys that before this season, I think most people would have said they're absolutely going to be playing in the league next year. Uh, Purdy, I wasn't so high on. At least on a roster. Yeah, there's yeah, a on difference. a roster as a backup quarterback. Yeah. yeah. He may, he, may, he may be one of the top, uh, what, 96 quarterbacks in the, in, in the country. Yeah, and Hall would probably be like a second-string running back somewhere. Yeah, I think, I think Hall's on, on a roster for, on, a, on the 53. So, um, okay, Fresno State heading to L.A. to take on the UCLA Bruins. Uh, UCLA ranked number 13 in the country. Minus 11 is the spread here, and 63 is the number. Scott, two teams here that I like quite a bit going up against each other. I've been pleasantly surprised by this UCLA Bruins team. Having said that, 11 is a lot against this Fresno State that hung in there against Oregon last week or a week before, and then we found out last week how good Oregon was as they took care of business against Ohio State. So, ergo, is uh, Fresno State better than Ohio State, Scott? I'm going to go with the no. Okay. You love that when they when they, how they put that together like at the end of the season about like oh, of course it's so funny about who you have to it's so it's, it's selective uh, data management yeah absolutely true having said that eleven is a ton do you think it's a potential look at spot for UCLA with a road game against Stanford up next <sighs> Stanford were better maybe but that's what I'm saying they just beat USC so I am curious if that potentially will cause them to get a little bit of newfound respect. Let down, look ahead, sandwich. What do you want to call it, buddy? Well, that's why I like UCLA. Uh, the point is, I was kind of setting you up there. I do really like that UCLA had a bye last week. Right. Not that they really needed extra preparation for Fresno, but it might allow them to focus on this specific game, one game at a time type of mentality. Because if you even were preparing for Stanford, you had two weeks to do it instead of one. So you can divide the preparation up equally. Fresno, I like. I think this team's good. I'm not going to roast Herner and uh, Ronnie Rivers, who I love as a running back. But UCLA, I think this team's really good. And we talked about it when they beat Hawaii. Hawaii got killed by Oregon State uh, last week, so we know Hawaii's not very good. But we said in that game, you can tell they do things a certain way that'll translate against better opponents. And UCLA can run the ball. The defense is very good. I'm still not a big fan of their quarterback, but I like this UCLA team. I think they're good. I agree. Do you think they cover? I think they will. I would say no if there wasn't a bye week before, but okay. I do think the week off will allow them to focus and not look ahead to Stanford. I'm assuming we disagree, but I don't know if you agree the bye week potentially helps keep them yes, focused. I, I agree. I agree that I agree that it helps. Um not sure it helps enough. See, I don't know how, I don't know if Old Fresno Dogs, State Old Dogs have been good to me. They, both of these teams have been good to me. They've been very good. I I'm just saying Fresno did keep it close against Oregon. Oregon also was already preparing for Ohio State, and that was a double win for them because they ended up beating Ohio State. So I don't know if Fresno State was amazing. Or if Oregon just had an off game, point is, I'll go with the team on the bye week or off the bye week, I should say. All right, I'll pl I'll play I'll I'll play UCLA as well. I'm going to play the under here. I think that totals too high. I think these are two teams that ultimately probably want to run the ball. You know, they they they're certainly competent passing between Hayner and. I see thirty four twenty. Yeah, I think that's, that's that's probably pretty close. So I will play uh, UCLA under, and you same. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the under, and I'll go with UCLA. 
All right. Purdue heading to uh, touchdown Jesus land. Take on Notre Dame. Notre Dame seven point favorite. 58 is the total. How am I supposed to take Purdue when they can't fit their drum in the building? It's all over now. 100 years of tradition, buddy. It's all down the drain. Have they never been there before? They play them like almost every year. Uh, maybe they just had a smaller drum set. I don't think so. It's I'm same. joking. I, I, I have no idea. Um, it's going to be really fun when somebody's going to be giving a phone call to the bands. They can start playing the, uh, the drums in the parking lot. You know, here's the deal with this game. I think people are – this number is too low for me. I think about people, for Notre Dame, or are you talking about? I think the sp- the spread the spread is too low. This it should be, it should be higher. I don't think Purdue's that good. No, this is a this is a a number that reflects people thinking that because Notre Dame has had some struggles that they're not good that they're on the same level as Purdue. And I think people are looking at that Florida State game, which you know again a weird game there. They're looking at the t- Toledo game. We both like Toledo. Love so. Toledo. Love Toledo. Think they're a very good team. I mean, you know, I, I don't know that you and I agree with this. I think they end up in the top five by the time or top top twenty five by the time the season is done. Um, I've got I've got Notre Dame taking care of business here against Purdue. I agree. Now you have to wonder about Notre Dame potentially looking ahead to Wisconsin, which is up next week in a neutral. So that is definitely not the best spot in the world for them. But Purdue beat Oregon State in a very close game, and UConn. We can pump the brakes a little bit. You know, you yeah. beat UConn by 49. It's okay. Like, you're supposed to do that. I'll go with – I'll go Notre Dame. Purdue, the issue I have is with the defense. I think that even though they've looked decent through the first two weeks, Notre Dame up front, we know they'll dominate in the trenches. It's what they're going to do. We know Kyle Hamilton's a lunatic at linebacker. I think that he'll be able to impact the game. And Purdue, I think, is a decent team. But I think there are levels here, and I think Notre Dame is just a better team. And at home, after they got put on upset alert last week, I got to assume that Kelly's going to have the team ready to go, don't you think? Yes, I do think so. I think that number. I think that number is too low. Should be closer to nine. It could be what Notre Dame needed. You know, you end up beating Florida State in a road game. You return home. And, oh, sorry, Kyle Hamilton the safety. By the way, I said linebacker. My bad. But the point is, is that you have a very tough game against Florida State. You come back home, you think you're going to roll, and you don't. I think it's a good spot for Notre Dame to put together a nice quality effort over 60 minutes. Yep, agreed. Yep, I think, I think it's a confidence builder, builder, and I think they take care of business in this one. Um, and as far as the total goes, what do you got? Uh, for the total on this one, I think this number is close to where it should be. I'm going to lean to the under. Am I thrilled with it? No, but I see this game all finishing somewhere around like 31 to 20. I'm not sure. I just don't think Purdue's going to score as easily as people think they're going to. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This, I think this Notre Dame defense is still good. And if the spread is seven and a half, that means you basically need Purdue to contribute a decent amount. I don't see that happening. Well, I've still got it at seven. So, well, the point is, is that it's within a touchdown. So you need Purdue to actually do something. I don't really see that happening. Agreed. Number one, Alabama traveling down to the swamp to take on the number 11 ranked Florida Gators, Scott. I think Alabama. you're going to skip this and save it for last, but okay. Alabama, 14 and a half point favorites. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I just. It's fine. We got the 11 in there, whatever. Yeah. Um, I got I to roll with Bama. I agree. Florida is a team that has looked okay so far. Defensively, though, not impressed. Gave up 14 points to FAU. You gave up 20 points to South Florida. You know how hard it is to give up 20 points to South Florida? You have to be actively trying to let them score points. That FAU game, that troubles me, buddy. Uh, both of those games trouble me. But I'm not a fan of the defense. The offense, I really like the, the dual quarterback system they have there with Jones and Richardson. The issue is neither of them are great at throwing. They're both good at running, and that's a serious problem because Bama is really good against the run. So something's yep. got to give. But if Florida's not able to stretch the field at all with its receiving core, and we know Bryce Young's going to throw a couple bombs at some point in this game, I think Bama just has too much firepower. Agreed. I got got Bama minus 14 and a half. What do you got on the total there? I'm going to lean over, but once again, I don't know how much I'm expecting from Florida if their only source of offense is running the ball, which is what Bama's good at stopping. I I just think Bama's going to put up 42 points. Okay. I agree. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got the over there. You got a small lean on the over? 
Uh, yeah, I see 42-21. Ohio State, number nine, hosting a Tulsa, 24-and-a-half point favorite. 61 is the number here. Scott, no look-ahead spot for Ohio State as they have Akron on deck next week, followed by Rutgers and Maryland. Nobody, nobody looking ahead at that in no way, shape, or form. Looks like an excellent opportunity for the Buckeyes to get back on track. This is a Tulsa team that we knew would take a step backwards after uh, after losing a couple of really high-quality players off that defense. Did you think they would take enough steps backwards to lose to UC Davis, Scott? No, but then they also managed to keep it close against Oklahoma State, so they had a better showing in Week 2, onward and upward, as the people say. But – Ohio State was really close to making it to my final three picks. Right. This has all the makings of an Ohio State murder. The only issue I have is I don't think the defense is very good, but then again, Tulsa's offense and not good either. Stroud threw for 400-something yards against Oregon. He torched Minnesota secondary. You think Tulsa's cornerbacks have been able to stay with Olave and Wilson? Absolutely not. So I, I think Stroud's going to throw it around the parking lot. I think Ohio State will probably score 42 points, and I think they'll probably win 42-10. to 10. So you got the under? Yeah, I might be generous, by the way. Like, they can potentially score 50 after a loss. I just don't think they're going to. I think that eventually they'll take their foot off the gas. 42 to 10, 45 to 10. Uh, Ohio State by murder. You? I've got Ohio State big. I don't think uh, – I, I think Tulsa does enough late to get this one over the total. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ohio State put up 48 on their own, and I think that gets us to the over. I think that the magic number for Tulsa is going to be 14. Yeah, that seems about right. I think 48-14 is a very legitimate. I don't think they get there. Cincinnati on the road heading to Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosier Daddies. Cincinnati number eight in the country. They are a four-point road favorite in this one. Scott, is Cincinnati the Rodney Dangerfield of college football? No respect. None. None at all. I see uh, it down to three and a half, actually, in most spots. Okay. Uh, I did put this together yesterday, so there are some corrections there. Now, the line is obviously telling me take Indiana because it looks a little too easy for Cincinnati. Having mm-hmm. said that, we both don't think Indiana's very good. Then again, they got killed by Iowa. Iowa might just be a really good team. We're still waiting to see that. Uh, to see if Ohio, if Iowa, if uh, Iowa can you know keep the momentum moving forward, but right. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. Penix is still a quarterback who makes way too many mistakes in the pocket. Am I supposed to be impressed because they killed Idaho? Like I don't exactly think this Indiana team is very good, and I think Cincinnati struggled a bit with Murray State, but once again, look at spot Big Ten team on the road up next. Ritter, Fickle. Everybody, I think they're ready to go. I think Cincinnati wins this game. It's a chance to make a statement. All right, solid. And, yeah, I like this Cincinnati defense quite a bit. And I'm assuming we'll agree together that Penix is going to throw not one interception, but probably two interceptions in this game. I've got him down for two in this one, yeah, under, under constant pressure. And I think Ritter and company will run the ball. If they take care of the ball, they should win the turnover battle. I think they're going to win the game. All right, solid. And what do you have as far as your total goes? I'm going to lean under. I know that it's a low total at 49 and a half. This game does have a serious grinded out feel to it where I think Cincinnati is going to win. Do I think either team gets to 30? No. I think Cincinnati wins. It's going to be close, but I'll say 27-20. All right, Scott. And now we're getting into the land of the big numbers. Wait, what that? about you? You like the under or the over? I've got the under there as well. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yep, cool. Cincinnati in the under. New Mexico heading to College Station to take on Texas A&M, ranked number seven in the country. Texas A&M, the Aggies are 29.5-point favorites. 50 is the number here. I despise this game with a passion. Well, you don't like getting involved with New Mexico games? I can't. New Mexico gave up multiple touchdowns to New Mexico State, and yet A&M has a backup quarterback, and they, and they just scored – what did they score again? They scored 10 points against Colorado? Yeah, 10 to 7. Or, or, no, no, they scored 7. Or, no, they won, they won 10 to 7. They yes. won. It was 10 to 7. I don't like either of these teams, but if I had to play it, I'm laying it. I can't take points with New Mexico. That team stinks. Yeah, not good. This team that just beat New Mexico State by 9 points. 
and Mexico State we know is not very good. But Texas A and M, I'm going to give the backup backup quarter the backup quarterback a pass because you go into the whole week in a hostile environment and you assume that you're not going to touch the ball. You're going to sit there, watch the youngster try to lead his team to a win, and he goes down in the first quarter and you're thrown into the fire, and I'm assuming you didn't really get many practice reps. Or if you did, now with the first stringers. So I'm hoping Jimbo, with a week of preparation, will get the backup quarterback ready to go, and he won't look as anemic as he did last week. So if I had to play it, A&M's defense shut down Kent State. I don't think that New Mexico is going to score much. I'll take A&M in a route. Yeah, I think think they get well in front of the home crowd. I wouldn't be surprised to see – New Mexico keep it relatively closest in the first half, say 14 points or less. I think second half, yep. a and just going to wear them down. Yep. I think Kyle Field gets to rock in there. The 12th man takes over, and A&M takes care of business. I also have New Mexico not scoring much against this ferocious A&M defense. I do have the under 50. It's tough because New Mexico's defense is so bad, but A&M's offense – also struggled against Kent State. They won the game handily, but Kent State, you're playing them and you're a top 10 team, you should probably score 50. But I'll lean to the under two. New Mexico, I don't think they're reaching 10. I don't know if they're reaching the end zone. They might at some point, but I like the under. All right, moving on. Georgia Tech taking on the Clemson Tigers. Clemson is at home, laying 28 and 52 is the number. We talked earlier about this Georgia Tech team, how I really thought they would be better in the third year of the coach. They, uh, I can't remember where they brought him. They brought him over from a uh, FCS school, very good record. But uh, he's a pro style guy, and of course he inherited. Were you talking about Jeff Collins? Yeah, they inherited all the uh, all the triple option guys that have been there at Georgia Tech forever. So he's kind of finally turning it back into his unit, but it, the results just haven't been there yet. I've, I've got to take Clemson here. I have to. It's a situation where you can make an argument that Clemson's not as good as they usually are because that's true. Having said that, Clemson usually beats Georgia Tech by 50. I think they'll win by 45. Georgia Tech – and Clemson are just never on the same level. It's not even close. Clemson has better athletes, the better players. If Clemson wants to win their first conference game by 60, they can win by 60. So I'll assume Clemson wins by five touchdowns. I'll take them to win by 35. I think they, I think they, put, up, I think they put up 45, 48. They might Georgia. make a statement. They might say, you know, we lost on TV to Georgia. We beat an FCS team. It's conference play. Let's remind people who's boss. I've got the over there as well. I think Clemson can reach the over by themselves if they want to. Agreed. Iowa laying a big number at home against Kent State. 23 is the spread there. Number five ranked Hawkeyes. 56 is the total. What do you have? You know, I love Kent State as a team. But -hmm. if they couldn't score against A&M, I think they're going to have a really hard time scoring against Iowa. And Iowa's really good at forcing turnovers. They can pound the rock. Even the quarterbacks look pretty good. The, you know they're gonna bet, they're gonna dominate in the trenches. I'm going Iowa. They got Colorado State on deck, which is the opposite of a look ahead spot because they can take a nap against Colorado State. I think Iowa rolls here. I hope Kent State can keep it somewhat respectable, but I think that Kent State might struggle to reach the end zone twice. Looking at this matchup here, I think Iowa ends up winning by I'd say the score of. 38 to 10. So I'm going to look at the under and I'm going to look at Iowa. You? The under's gonna, tough, but that, that's how I'm looking at it. I'm going to play Kent State just in a little bit of a letdown spot here for the Hawkeyes after that big uh, intrastate victory over Iowa State last well, it was back. It was back to back because they also beat Indiana. So now they have their first somewhat cupcake on the schedule. Yeah, I uh, I think they relaxed just enough to let Kent State keep it within three touchdowns. I'll, t- I'll take... I'll take the flashes there. Uh, I'm just concerned that Kent State struggled so much against A&M moving the ball. I know they should have covered because of the field goal kicker, but still, they couldn't really move the ball. Is Iowa's defense a top three unit in the country? Because I think it might be. Don't know yet, but it's certainly possible. So I, I think they're going to struggle to move the ball. That's my logic. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I've got the under using that same logic as well. I got the under. I just like the over. I just like uh, Kent State 
uh, getting killed in this one because I think they're going to score 10 points. Oregon hosting Stony Brook. Scott, minus 42. Uh, that's Oregon is favored by 42. Sorry, if you're, if, if you're new to college football, the Ducks are a, a six-touchdown favorite. 52 and a half is the number. Boy, there's your play right there, Scott. Play, the, uh, play Stony Brook over five and a half. <laughs> that's the, i'm surprised you're not giving that out on the three picks at the end i know like i said i'm, I'm one and one on the ridiculous overs for the for the big spreads what do you know about stony brook scott uh, i know that stony brook is not very good and i'm not really sure what a sea wolf is do you know where they are stony brook uh-huh they're in new york are they in new york aren't I, i'm pretty sure they are I think I don't. I'm, sometimes I'm like I ninety. Per, I'm like ninety percent sure they are. Sometimes I quiz and sometimes I just ask. And this time I was just asking. They're, yeah, they're in Stony Brook, New York. So I'm assuming okay. that they're in New York. Are they least close to the sea? Uh they might be close to wolves. What the hell is a sea wolf? That's what I just said. I have no idea what that is. So it's not even a thing. No, it's not even a sea horse. It's not even the same family. I, I don't really know what you're doing over there with a Seawolf, but Stony Brook's a team that... You say no to your silly mascot. We know that if Oregon wants to pitch a shutout, they'll pitch a shutout. Yep. Stony Brook's not going to move the ball. Now, nope. is Thibodeau going to play? Nope. I wouldn't play him. I don't know why he'd even consider it, because you're going to win the game anyway, so who cares? Do uh, you think Oregon has a letdown spot here? Maybe. Even in a letdown spot, do you want the points of Stony Brook? Because I don't really want them. That's the thing. That's, an, that's the biggest number on the board as far as top 25 goes. They have a conference game against Arizona up next at home. Yeah. I know that it's a conference game up next and all. Yeah. Arizona stinks. Like, yeah. Oregon can kill that team no matter what. I'm going to go with Oregon. I think they'll score 50-something on their own. I'm looking at the over. All right. I've got, I've got that as well. I, I'm, I'm really tempted, and, and when it comes down to it, I may actually make the play. I may take the uh, team total over five and a half or whatever that ends up being for Stony Brook there. I'll, I'll tell you one angle if you potentially like the over is the fact that if you were following the painful experience of Lafayette yesterday where they brought the backup quarterback in to throw a couple touchdowns, Oregon – has not used their backup quarterback once this season because they've been in two close games. They might be trying to throw it around a little bit in the second half to get their backup guys some reps. Fair enough. Good solid angle. All right, Scott. Rekindling of one of the great rivalries of all time as Nebraska heads to Norman to take on the Oklahoma Sooners. The number three ranked Sooners are a 22 and a half point home favorites. 62 is the number. No, just no, 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 a thousand times no on this Nebraska team. I still don't know what to think of this damn team. I know they're not very good. Like that part I figured out. The defense I think might actually be decent. Really? I think it might be okay. I'm not saying it's a great unit. I think Oklahoma's going to kill this team. Like I'm not taking Nebraska plus the points, but I do think this defense is tolerable. But Oklahoma's defense we know is – Let's just say a work in progress. Let's put it that way. But I like Oklahoma. If Rattler can stop turning the damn ball over, they should win by 35. Yep. I think I'll throw at least an interception. I'll take Oklahoma by 28. Well, my uncle had – never mind. Uh, I'll take Oklahoma as well, minus the 22 and a half. I'll play the over 62. This, this Oklahoma team has shown a propensity. You know – the I'm real, actually going to look at the under. The real play for me, Scott, is going to be Oklahoma first half because this, this Sooners team has shown a propensity to get out to big leagues and mm -hmm. didn't just absolutely play with their food, just set their utensils down and play with their food. So looking at the under, though, if I had to choose a separate play, I'd go with Nebraska team total under because even though Oklahoma's defense I just roasted because we know how bad they were against Tulane, I do think that they'll be engaged enough – to at least contain Martinez, if you keep him in the pocket and force him to throw, Nebraska's not going to move the ball that much. I think that if they can stop the run game, which I think they'll be able to do to some degree, I think they'll dominate the game. And I'm not really sure what Nebraska's backup plan is if they don't get Martinez into space. 
So I'll go with the team total under for Nebraska. What's your other plan to score? Oh, we don't really have one. I, uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. Not in the nine years that Martinez has been quarterback. Well, think about it. That was the game in Illinois, pretty much summed up in one play. He missed a bunch of open receivers. He had the 180-something yard touchdown, and they didn't do anything for the rest of the game. I'm aware. So I'm going to look at Oklahoma and Nebraska's team total under, I think, is tempting. South Carolina traveling to Athens to take on the number two ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia Bulldogs, 31 point favorites in this one over the Cacs. I don't think South Carolina is any good. Do you think that anybody on Georgia remembers the uh, Blankenship missed field goal, Blankenship missed field goal in double overtime? I'm sure coaches have a way of reminding them about that if they don't. The coaches, I'm just saying, I don't know if any of the players who were there are actively participating in this game, but I feel like the coaches might hammer it home. The last time that we had, you know, this team upset us a couple of years ago. Don't sleep on these guys. We're trying to kill this team. I think Georgia rolls. You? I think they do. I think they do okay. It's a lot of points in a conference game. It is. I think the South Carolina defense does just enough to keep it uh, to keep it respectable. I don't know that they score that much. I see it somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 20, 28, 28, 10, something like that, maybe 31, 10. See, I think that's the tough part is that South Carolina's defense has looked pretty good up to this point. Having said that, you only beat East Carolina Where? by three. I know it was on the road, but – I think Georgia, if they even look half as good as they did against UAB, they should cover this number. Georgia against UAB looked like the second best team in the country. I know that the level competition was weak. Offensively, they were dialed in. Defensively, they're absolutely nuts. I don't know if South Carolina is going to score a touchdown in this game. Yeah, and I will say that this is a UAB team that you and I both, I won't say we both liked them, but we both respected their defense a little more than Georgia did. Uh, Georgia didn't care. Yeah. Long hair don't care right there. I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the game, Cox Scott, just because it's 31 is just so many points to lay in a in a conference game. Not, uh, for a total of 47 and a half, I kind of have to agree. Not involving Vanderbilt. Yeah. So I'll take I'll take the small lean with the Cox and the points, and a small lean on the under as well. I'm gonna look at the under too. Although we you know we got suckered in. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change. And I was I was. We got suckered in on this Georgia number last week. I'm going. I'm going. To, I'm going to go with. The, I'm going to go with the over. I'll put you well, down. As, the you defense down. did their part. It was the I offense know. that couldn't stop scoring. I understand. I understand. Uh, okay. All right, buddy. That's it. So those are our uh, those are our picks for the top twenty five of the season. And now it is time to I move on. This, I think you meant this week, but close this, enough. This season, yeah, this week. Sorry. So I was because I was thinking about our season record. Uh, All good. Okay, so we talked about last week's results. You and I pushed at one and two, but of course I still have the honors from uh, tiebreaker week before victory. So uh, losers walk, Scott. What do you got? So starting off with my first play, I'm looking at a matchup between two teams that most people don't care about. It's between Troy and Southern Miss, and I like Troy minus nine at minus one twenty on Bet MGM. First of all, BetMGM, I don't know what they're doing again, but they're back to their old tricks because it's minus 10. It's minus nine, minus nine and a half, minus 120. Minus nine's minus 120. There's no extra juice. They're just giving me a free half point. I don't really know what the point is, but thank you, I guess. I'll take the nine. Uh, but Troy, both teams have the same record. Troy's one and one. However, they gave Liberty – all that it could handle last week. And they really shut down a very competent Liberty offense, only giving up 21 points. They were also able to sack Malik Willis five times in that game. They have a really good pass rush. The defense is really good. And Southern Miss, I know they beat Grambling 37-0 last week. It's Grambling. Pump the brakes. They lost the first game of the season to South Alabama on the road by 24 Reminder, South Alabama needed to come from behind last week to beat Bowling Green. South Alabama's not very good. Troy, I think, is a solid team in the Sun Belt. I think they'll roll. Nine's too low. Southern Miss offensively has some issues, mostly a quarterback. It's going to be a low-scoring game. It's going to be hideous. But I think Troy's going to win 27-13. All right. 
I, don't, don't hate it. My first play, Scott, is going to be the Stanford Cardinal as they try to keep the momentum going with their coach firing victory last week over USC. They've got their new quarterback in, and they are going up against one of the worst Power 5 teams in the nation. But they're on fire. They won a game. Perhaps the worst Power 5 team in the nation. Um, we'll see. It's, it's a real dogfight with this another team, and we may even talk about them here in a minute. They're 500. Don't disrespect them. Come on, of man. Course, of course, we're talking about the Vanderbilt Commodes. Right? The com- sorry, check notes. Uh, the Commodores. Commodores. The Commodores. Um, this is this is a dreadful team. The Commodores. There's just no way about it. Uh, Stanford, after a horrible, horrible game against a pretty bad K State team, it turns out, uh, made it, the switch at tor- quarterback, running in uh, running in Tanner McGee. He looked competent as a quarterback last week against USC. He didn't cost him the game, and of course USC uh, dropped that one, 42-28. They were never in it. I like Stanford to keep the momentum going uh, at Vandy as they travel to Nashville in the battle. One of the, the uh, one of the, the Brainiac Bowl part two. I uh, I like Stanford to uh, take care of business there, laying the thirteen points. I'm never going to criticize you fading Vanderbilt. So yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, sure. Looking at my second play, it's a game we talked about earlier in the show, which I gave an opinion on, but I definitely had I'd say more passion that I was saving up for it. It's Michigan State, and I like Michigan State plus the six and a half at minus 105 on DraftKings at Miami. Miami got killed by Alabama in week one, then barely beat Appalachian State. I know people are expecting Miami to turn it around at some point with Manny Diaz because it's Miami, and college football is more fun when they're good. Are we sure that he's the guy? Because I know for a fact he's not the guy, and yet people keep trying to tell me he is. He's not. The offense isn't very good. The defense hasn't been as good as it should be under, Man, under uh, Manny Diaz. And Michigan State, I know it's a road game, but they did go into Northwestern at night in the season opener and dominated. Now, I know Northwestern's not very good, but the point is Michigan State has a ton of experience. This team is underratedly talented, and they have performed in a hostile environment before this season, so I know that they're capable of doing it. Meanwhile, Miami has had two home games. They haven't covered in either. They haven't looked any good in either of those games. And the issue that I have is the fact that King, who's a very mobile quarterback for Miami, has been sacked six times, including two times against App State. So I think Michigan State's going to rush the passer. Thorne's also underratedly mobile. I think you'll have some option uh, offense there with some read option reads, stuff like that. But I got to mention Kenneth Williams because Michigan State's running back, the guy's a star. I mean, there's no other way to put it. The guy is an absolute trackster. Big play waiting to happen. I think he'll be able to generate some big plays. Michigan State, it's worth mentioning, is averaging eight yards per carry. Yes. That's insane. I think Michigan State's good enough to win the game. I think even though I roasted Mel Tucker in the past, I might owe him an apology soon. I think he's arguably as good of a coach as Manny Diaz, if not better, from what I've seen so far. Six and a half. You couldn't even cover eight and a half against Appalachian State. I got to take Michigan State in this spot. Fair enough. Yeah, you, you've got me backed into a corner because I can't, I can't criticize a game that I've already picked the same way on. So, well done. Checkmate. All right, for my second pick, I'm going to go uh, a little out of my comfort zone. Scott, I'm going to take the Kansas Jayhawks plus 18 points. Is this your version of uh, taking an obscure team total on a FCS made-up school, but instead you're taking Kansas? It is not. Okay. It is not. I'm getting to it. As I said, I th- I'm not sure I said Williams. I meant Kenneth Walker the third. Sorry. Okay, my bad. Um, it was my bad. Well, for not catching it, that's what I'm saying. They play Baylor, Scott. They play the play play the Baylor Bears. Baylor Bears, not a great team. Uh, beat the hell out of Texas Southern. Congratulations. Struggled with Texas State. Now they got to go to Lawrence. And you know, I was weirdly impressed by this KU team that ended up losing by 27 and not covering the number against Coastal Carolina like we predicted. However, they did some things that makes me think that maybe, just maybe, they're not going to be the perennial doormat that they have been and let Vanderbilt be clearly uh, far and away the worst team in uh, Power 5. Jason Bean, the quarterback for KU, is actually a dual threat. He, he can actually run the football. He ran 13 times for 102 yards against Coastal. 
they had no answers for him. Plus, Scott had two other running backs that popped for 14 yards or more as far as a single carry goes. They've got some speed back there. Still not a good team. Defense still has lapses. They're better than they have been, but I'm going to hold my nose. I think that's just too many points for the homestanding Jayhawks. Give me KU plus 18. That's the thing, though, is that Leopold has actually made this team look presentable, yes. which is something that Kansas hasn't been in a long time. They're not good, but I, th- I agree with you. I think it's too many points. But looking at the last game, it's going to be a very close game. It should be a nail-biter, but it's going to be between Boise State and Oklahoma State on the Smurf turf, and I'm taking Boise State. And I got minus three at minus 115 on bet online. Oklahoma State's undefeated. Having said that, they are probably the most unimpressive 2-0 team out of all of FBS because they barely beat Missouri State at home and they barely beat Tulsa at home, actually trailed in the fourth quarter against Tulsa. And they've won both those games by a combined 12 points. And Oklahoma State's offense has been a disaster. Now, Spencer Sanders, their starting quarterback, missed the first game of the season, came back, and he was not very good leading the offense against Tulsa. Oklahoma State only recorded 313 total yards of offense in that game, Boise State's defense is really, really good at forcing turnovers. They are averaging four turnovers forced per game, or four takeaways per game, and Oklahoma State has turned the ball over three times this season. We know Spencer Sanders is really, I'm trying to think of the right term, a gunslinger to some degree. I don't even know if he's a good thrower, but he takes a lot of chances, so that's, I guess, the way I'll put it. I think Boise State forces some turnovers, I think Bachmeyer is going to hook up with Shakir a couple times for big plays. And on the Smurf turf against a really, really, I think, overrated Power 5 team, I know Boise is going to give it all it has, and I think Boise wins this game by at least four points. Give me Boise. You think Boise gets a little extra motivation anytime they play a Power 5 school? I think they have to because at the end of the day, they're still a Group 5 and they get recognition for it. But we would all agree that any time a Group a five team matches up at home with a power five team that's playing its first road game of the season. The crowd's going to be amped for this one. Agreed. Uh, and I think, I think Bach is better than Sanders as well. All right. Fair enough. All right, Scott, for my last pick, I literally have been waiting years to make this play. Don't tell me you're taking Kansas state. <laughs> no, no. By the way, uh, I think I think a fade of Kansas State is is a good play this week against Nevada. They got their they got uh, the backup quarterback in. Got Howard in there playing quarterback, and he is not good, sir. Are you still, are you still traumatized from last year watching Howard? Oh God, that was just he was he was so bad last year. He was so he, bad. He supposedly had gotten better. He couldn't have gotten worse. Uh, well, he threw he threw he threw a pick six and another interception and fumbled the ball. So. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's worse, but he certainly does not look like he's. You just it. need Thompson back for the Oklahoma game. That's all you need. Yeah, that's no lie. Um, Scott, I'm going to take the Presbyterian Campbell over 63. Of now, course you are. Why does that? Why is that a thing? Why? Wh- what is that game? Well, Scott, Presbyterian Blue Hose are coached by none other than our old pal Kevin Kelly. The coach who never punts that's taken Pulaski Academy in Little Rock, Arkansas, to nine state titles in his 18 years. That's right. He never punts. This team has scored 151 points in their first two games, Scott. Now, it has been against uh, very much lesser opponents, okay? They, they've, uh, they haven't done anything. Uh, they played St. Andrews, the St. Andrews Knights. You never heard of St. Andrews before? They're a powerhouse. They also, um, they also played the UTFL Eagles. Any, any idea what that is? Uh, I'm assuming it's a college. They're so, they're, they're so obscure, I can't even click on the link to find out what the actual name of the school is. University of Tennessee at Fort Lauderdale? No, University of Florida? I don't know. I don't. It was a pretty big check for them to show up for that game. I think you're underestimating how big that check really was. Anyway, they beat the, they beat the UTFL Eagles 68 to three. Now against St. Andrews, Scott, they broke an, uh, they broke a D one record by throwing a one gentleman by himself. He had 10 touchdowns. It threw 10 touchdown passes. That's, that's the starting quarterback through 10 touchdown passes. You know, they, and they, they said, you know what, that's getting a little silly, right? They, they, so they take Ren Hefley out 
They bring in Tyler Huff, Scott. He goes seven for nine, throws two more touchdown passes. So if you're scoring at home, that's right, 12 touchdown passes. Presbyterian wins that one, 84 to 43. They're taking on Campbell. Campbell's pretty much an average FCS team. I, I don't hate a sniff of Campbell of, of uh, Presbyterian cover in the number. I think it's 13, but I really like this total. This is a team, again, I can't stress it enough, they never punt. So if you're running into a team that's going to stop I you. I see Presbyterians gonna... plus eight and a half, by the way. Eight and a half? I see eight and a half. Is, that, is it really come down that much? That's what I see. Because it was, man, it was. Of course, they're getting points. So if you want to take the money line, that's around plus 240. Wow. Yeah, that was a, that was a game yesterday that was. Sorry to, in, sorry to interrupt you, but I thought you'd want to know that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is down to eight and a half. So people are waking up, buddy. And now that, now that this show is going to drive that number down even more. Because they're going to go, oh, my God, that's where that guy went? Yes. That's How do you Kevin name your did. team after a watering tool? The Blue Hose. The Blue Hose? What are you serious? Nice. It's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's like the Red Sox, Scott. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the hose. It's, that's what it is. I still don't know why there's an X in there instead of CKS, but whatever. Yes, let's let's not go down there. Though, but yeah, so that's going to be my final pick. I'm going to take the Presbyterian Campbell Camels over 63. That's a gift. That's a gift, Scott. That's the fighting camels to you. <laughs> the, 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 Put some respect on those camels. Some respect on that name. So yeah, it's uh, that's I'm anxious to see. This is going to be their first real test against an FCS team. They're never going to punt, so you might as well kick back and relax if you can somehow find a stream of this thing. That's right. Oh, it's it's it'll be fantastic. They don't punt. They always onside kick, and they never send a punt returner back. Did you know that? I would never send a punt returner back because it, it's uh, too many bad things happen. You can fumble. You can have a penalty. So they prefer just to have all 11 guys rush the punter. Of course, they can roll the ball, but great for them. I want possession. So I actually agree with that last one. Yep, I, I, I agree. The analytics prove every one of those things correct. So, you know, I don't think he's going to change college football, but whoever his protege is will. Whoever takes up the mantle. Because Kevin Kelly's 53 years old. I think he's a little too old to have the kind of impact. He needed to get hired about 10 years ago. But I, this is going to be the wave of the future. You heard it here first. Mark this show. We've talked about him in the past. This will be the wave of the future. When they first started making, they first started making shifts in the Major League Baseball, people were like, what are you doing? Like, you can't do this. this is blah, blah, blah. And now everybody shifts. That's the same way it's going to be. Punting is going to be a thing of the past, Scott. I think punting is going to stay. But I think people might stop Ooh, sending they, returners back there. Okay. I'll, see, I think, I think people are more likely to – because they're, they're starting to not punt anymore. I just think it's stupid conceptually. We need a guy to catch the ball to save a 10-yard bounce, but he can fumble the ball and lose us the game. Right. Here's, and here's the concept behind that, and then we got to get out of here. We're, we're running late. But the, the theory behind it is you, most coaches undervalue possessing the football. You are better to take a shot at fourth and eight wherever you are in the field than to punt the football away and give away a possession. So. I can get That's the theory. That. So far, it's worked out pretty well. We'll find out a lot more tomorrow. All right. Anything else? Any final words, Scott? Uh, no. I'll just quickly go through my three picks place. once again, and then you can do the same. Yep. Um, I'm taking Troy minus nine at minus 120 against Southern Miss. I'm taking Michigan State plus six and a half against Miami. And I'm taking Boise State minus three against Oklahoma State. I guess I should have been writing those down. All right. Uh, Boise. Boise's uh, minus three at minus 115 on bet online and Michigan state's plus six and a half at minus one Oh five on DraftKings. All right. And I've got the Stanford Cardinal minus 13 over Vanderbilt. I've got KU catching 18 against the Baylor bears and the Presbyterian blue hose and the Campbell camels will go over 63. Okay. Very good. Thanks very much for listening guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tell your friends. Don't forget to check out our daily show that we do, Winners and Winers Radio. And, of course, a little bit later today or possibly tomorrow, um, we will be dropping our NFL show where we preview every game on the board. But for now, we appreciate you checking us out. For myself and for Scott Reichel, for the whole team at Winners and Winers Radio, you guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. Good luck on all your plays. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.